Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. I'm going to be talking about the X-Men animated series. What can I say about this show other than I think it's amazing. I love it. It came out in 1992. Sort of a spin-off or a continuation from X-Men Pride of the X-Men, which was something they pitched earlier. It's basically an adaption of the Jim Lee run in the early 90s. The artwork holds up, in my opinion, to a certain extent, and more so than maybe the Justice League, and I think it might have been a better show, pound for pound, than the Justice League. I would say its competitor in quality would be Batman the Animated Series, which is also amazing, in my opinion. I'm a big fan of comic books. Big nerd. Surprise. And this show really came at an amazing time. I think it was done exceptionally well, although I think in the later seasons, things start to unravel a little bit, but the heart and core of it are amazing in my opinion. The teams back in the comic books were split, I think, at the time, and this was an adaption of, you know, an amalgamated team in a sense, but the blue team, so to speak. I think it really took its hardcore elements from the comics and adapted them to near perfection. Um, the X-Men, when it starts, is Cyclops, Wolverine, Rogue, Storm, Beast, Gambit, Jubilee, Jean Grey, Professor X, and Morph. The pilot episode, the two-parter, Night of the Sentinels, is amazing. It grabs you. Pulls you in, and I'm going to say for three solid seasons of this show, it was the best of its kind. They handle some great topics. As everybody knows, if you know the X-Men, it's uh, mutants who are hated and feared. I won't go into a big thing about the X-Men, you know, when they start or what they, you know, their themes are or that they stand for. But a lot of the elements of the show are really dealing with... Um, uh, the Holocaust, um, you can consider at the time AIDS was a big thing, even things like divorce. And when you look back, the only little nitpick I think everybody has, in my opinion, is like Wolverine would have been just killing everybody. But robots he's allowed to, I think he slices and dices robots. And even then, the show was being pushed into a more child-friendly um, direction. And I'm going to give them props for holding out. Even to the end, they stuck to their guns, I think. Yeah, Wolverine didn't chop people in pieces, and you didn't see a lot of blood, although you did see a little bit here and there. I think it's mostly from Logan bleeding and um, healing and that type of thing. But you don't see it much on the characters. Or the villains in that sense. Um, taken from the inspiration of Jim Lee era, if you're familiar with the drawings, uh, the comic book artist, and if you're not, it's basically a great adaption in more than just the themes and the, the storylines and plots. It was also the visuals. And unlike my little nitpick about the Justice League cartoon, was that they all were the same looking mold. And in this one, it, it felt different. It, they felt more unique to their um, counterparts and other adaptions. Even the Batman animation was um, amazing, but in, in a different style. This tried to, and did a great job of bringing that look to TV. And let's be honest... They're cartoons in my world, 49, and it's now animated. But a great Saturday morning cartoon, adapting plot lines incredibly well. They even up the ante here and there and just keep surprising you. Some of the direction, the, how do you call it in, um, in animation, but the, uh, camera angles and the innovative use of 
space on how they would go in and out of combat in different situations and show it from different angles. It was, in my opinion, groundbreaking at the time. So you have so many things working. If you're a fan of the X-Men, they are adapting the stories really well. Okay, maybe not every character is the center point. So if they have a Kitty Pride comic book storyline, I think it was the fourth season or fifth season, they gave it to Jubilee. Those type of um, elements I'm fine with. I've discussed this in different podcasts, numerous. You're going to change things and make it different. Do it well. And I think it works in all levels. The writing, the voice acting, everything is spot on. Yes, there's a couple of, um, uh, like anything, bad episodes in a way. Things that don't grip you. But the storylines were amazing. The way they were able to keep plots going, bring them back, you didn't see that much. I think Justice League started doing that a little bit more. And Batman the Animated Series didn't uh, have that formula, per se. Uh, Spider-Man was another amazing show, I think. They were spot-on amazing. I'll probably do a podcast on that. But this this one is, like to me, is one of the best, or arguably the best. Like I would maybe debate it. Not just thinking subjectively, but objectively. Uh, how well does it pace its plot? How immersed are you? Um, the visuals, the voice acting, it all comes together well. I have so much um, excitement going back and watching the show. You find little things here and there. And when the first season starts and you have... The mutant um, type of gender, and it's the Sentinels. It's pretty fucking scary, in a sense. I mean, I wasn't scared at the time. In 92, I was still 21. But the uh, weight of everything felt real. It felt good. It, you didn't feel like you were watching a watered-down version of a comic book, because I love to read and write in that sense of, you know, I wrote a novel. I've always wanted to write comic books. It's a passion and love of mine. I collected them up to like 2008, 2010, I think. It was when I finally stopped and I had no more lists to go pick up. I was that type of collector. and Actually, no collector. I guess my friends, they're all over the fucking place, the comics. A couple of them I had and you know, I kept care of. But I'm a real um, lover of comic books. I try to be open-minded and have adaptions. And I say, do it well, fine. I love the X-Men movie. One and two are great. I enjoy three, whatever. And some of the ancillary stuff uh, that's connected is pretty good, but there's some duds there. The show maybe gets to the, you know, go, starts going off the tracks a little bit, maybe by uh, season four. I don't know if you consider them full seasons also, the way they broke it up and the way season five ends. But there are impactful stories that just grip you when you watch the beginning and you've got a night of the sentinels and it's your pilot episode to get you in they go through other things you've got uh magneto is just amazing by the time the seasons progress you're looking at them bringing in days of the future past some epic storylines you've got um some great uh um, guest stars that are pulled out of the comics that wouldn't normally fit in the, in the way the comics are running, but they have so much leeway in the, in the cartoon to do amazing things. So I'm all for it. The mixing up of characters and giving them different storylines, story they should get an award for that. By season three, it's the Phoenix Saga, and what can you say? Maybe the best animation. Uh, segment. It's what is looked back on and given such praise. They nailed it. It's a real shame that the movies have not lived up to this. And especially nowadays, you think, you know, we could do anything in movie wise. But this was it. It was season three, the Phoenix Saga. It's like, um, what is it, like five parts, and then it's the Dark Phoenix Saga, and it's just epic. You've got most things being 
adapted from Chris Claremont and John Byrne's work. Like I said, um, Jim Lee artwork as the best they could do it. And they keep that style. There was a recent um, cartoon that I really enjoyed. It was an animated movie, sort of. It was like Hulk vs. It was Hulk vs. Thor, Hulk vs. Wolverine. And I love that they take chances like that and go back to some artwork that you know, differentiates itself from everything else. I watched a amazing-looking X-Men animation from Japan. The fucking story sucked and the dubbing was bad. Man, it looked beautiful. You're not going to get those amazing looks, but it is so well done. It so comes right off the comic for its time that it, it goes by you. You're not thinking of, oh, I've seen better artwork. I've seen this. Uh, you can watch this show right now, get into it, and it's going to grab you, in my opinion. It's a great theme opening. You know, X-Men using their powers. It's just... Um, a special time, uh, special event, you know, I remember being riveted, uh, at the time, you know, you're going, I'm going to the comic book store and it was just, a, at that time, I think there was, um, you have to go to these little churches in the basements and go find your comics. Like the comic cons weren't a big thing. I don't think in uh, 92 for me anyway, I'm sure there might've been like the, a big one, but. Having my book and being at the 2012 one signing copies was a dream come true in a way. So we're looking at the X-Men animated series and going up to season three. It's great. It really pulls the storylines out. And you get, like I said, maybe would be mundane if it's divorces. But there's real deep comic book plots that they bring in. Something that Marvel and X-Men were renowned for. They have really good stories and they adapted them really well you want to get into nitpicks and stuff like that fine yes there's a bias um there might be better shows in a, in a different way maybe the, the source material is not really so important to me so okay i'll give that i do think in the long run dc's animation department is really committed and done some amazing things I wish Marvel would have done the same. They never really did. I will give some props to, you know, Wolverine and the X-Men. Was it uh, X-Men Evolution? They put it there, but they never really took that X-Men 90s feeling what they give you hints of in, like, going into Season 4 or Season 5. You know, you're looking at um, showing other teams. So you see, I think, X-Factor with Iceman and Havoc, a strong guy. You got real deep uh, Wolverine-themed shows, which became so popular, it's, it's unbelievable. I think it was voted like 70s uh, best creative creation or something like that. And yeah, he's not ripping people apart. I was sad to watch this start to end. It didn't feel as cohesive and still watched it every week and just dying to see what they were going to do. It was... Uh, exciting and surprising in the same way like i said they could take things you were watching happen in the comics and kind of put, weave them into this story that they started that was from like the early 90s that wasn't really caught up as it was being spread out within its own world it was creating um mr sinister the apocalypse done amazingly this is epic cartoon animation stuff you have to watch this this is something you can't let go if you ever thought about it people don't like fucking x-men or cartoons i get it i get it but this is a joy you, i watch this all the time use the themes and i'm role playing superheroes i play on the roll die 20 i've been experimenting even in my house tabletop stuff the, everything gets me going with this show I'll admit, towards season five, I'm going to get a little nitpicky and, you know, start pointing things out, but there's really nothing majorly wrong with the show. Even when they bring a character back, and, you know, it's uh, really deep in some parts. Uh, I'd like to really, um, you know, go through it maybe with a friend 
watch the pilot and do a little commentary on it and maybe even go through parts of the uh, show. And they did certain releases, and you can go and you can buy, like, the Dark Phoenix. It's all packaged for the Dark Phoenix. I don't know if that's a money grab in that sense, but the show had, in my opinion, proper critical praise, respect from the fans, respect from fans of other genre or other companies. I'll always say how much I love the Justice League cartoon, but my nitpicks are a little broader, a little more in-depth, and some of the uh, mechanics of it are a little wonky. And then they get into Justice League Unlimited, and it became fucking bonkers crazy, and I loved it more. But this was a time capsule. It's a moment that they committed to taking the comic book, putting it into a cartoon, and doing their best to make it work. So. I got nothing but high praise for the X-Men animated show called the (laughs) X-Men cartoon of the 90s. In any case, I implore everybody to watch this show. Give it a shot. I think you'll be hooked. Be well, everybody. Have a happy holidays, If depending on how I release these things. I wish everybody the best.